Good morning and welcome to worship at Luther Memorial Church. We're so glad that you've joined us and we hope that you're doing well. Enjoy your worship. I'm Fiona. And I'm Robin. We're your acolytes this week. In, in, the sermons, in the sermon of Jesus from Matthew chapter five, we hear, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Lindsay. I'm very glad to be with you in worship today. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, which means that this coming Wednesday, we will remember Ash Wednesday. I want to extend a special invitation to you all this Ash Wednesday to swing by the church between 12 and 12.30 or between 4 and 5, and you can pick up a small container of ash. If you like, I can say the words and you can mark the cross on your, for, uh, on your forehead right there, or you can take it home and do that with your family or during worship that evening, however you prefer. Before we jump too quickly into Lent, though, however, this Transfiguration Sunday is the Sunday where we also bury our Alleluia for the season that is ahead, and we will take it out again on Easter Sunday. So during this worship service, we would invite you to shout Alleluia, sing Alleluia, and um, praise God with a very special word. Will you now join with me in a word of prayer as we begin? The Lord be with you. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will you now join with me in our confession? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out on all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Please join me. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sin and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Now, people of God, hear this good news. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. I've tried to 
Good morning, I'm Christian. In today's reading, the spotlight of Christian ministry is not on the people who carry out ministry, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as God made light shine at creation, God makes the light of Jesus shine through our lives. A reading from the second book of Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, Word of Life. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello. Transfiguration. What is the definition of transfiguration? In Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it means one of three things. A change in form or appearance, an exalting, glorifying, or spiritual change, a metamorphosis. Interesting that Christ's transfiguration is also considered an exalting, glorifying spiritual change or a metamorphosis. We learn about metamorphosis at a young age with the butterfly. First comes the caterpillar, then the cocoon, then the butterfly emerges. It is described as a beautiful story, but imagine this from the perspective of the butterfly. It begins by eating leaves and crawling through life. Then something compels the creature to start wrapping itself up. It turns into a completely different creature while it sleeps. Then the cocoon breaks. The former caterpillar wakes up and finds out that it has wings and no longer has to crawl on the ground, but can fly. Transfiguration Sunday is right before Ash Wednesday, and the church is turning toward the season of Lent because it marks a final point in the metamorphosis of the disciples. 
They will walk with Jesus on his journey towards Jerusalem and the cross. They will share in his passion, struggle to understand their own journeys, deny knowing him, attempt comprehension at his resurrection. They too will have their own metamorphosis, an exalting, glorifying spiritual change, their own transfiguration. Let's make believe, just for a moment or two, that we are one of those disciples in today's Gospel story. I'd like you to try, if you can, to actually picture yourself with Jesus that day. Walking up the side of the high mountain, listening to him as you always did. Picture this in your mind. Close your my eyes if you need to. You and Jesus, walking up the mountain, listening to him talk about God's kingdom and how you will be a part of it. How do you feel? Are you confident? Excited? Are you scared? Are you thinking of going back down the hill? You are busy talking and listening, tired from the climb, and then, in Mark's words, he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. How would you experience this? We can read the words that explain Jesus' change in appearance, but how in the world would you, if you were standing there, understand this? Jesus is glowing, and Elijah and Moses standing there with him. Who here has experienced such an experience for real? Something that was terrifying and awesome. Something that stunned you into silence and awe. And what if transformation, transfiguration, or metamorphosis doesn't turn out pretty? We are all under a lot of pressure these days. I know that myself, as a mom of an almost 14-year-old, have taken on so many more responsibilities and pressures since this pandemic began. I am not only mom, but my son is around 24-7 since we don't leave the house often. I am a teacher, a quiz master, I am the encyclopedia, I am the thesaurus, I am a therapist. I cook three to four meals a day, and all those additional dishes that need to be washed, those are mine too. The laundry, the errands, the constant threat of COVID when we leave the house. We are constantly battling and sniping at each other. I'm also a student with two internships and a full-time class load. So I'm more often at my command station, it's no longer a desk, than I am anywhere else. I also work for my employer and all the stress that comes along with being accessible all day since I now work from home. Not to mention that I worry about my mom. Is she staying quarantined? Is she remembering her mask and hand sanitizer? Is it safe to go out and see her? And then my worries go back to my son. How is his schooling being affected? Is he keeping up and staying in line with the average eighth grader? Does he see his friends often enough? Does school from home count as screen time? Was that a cough? Do you have a sore throat? We're together all the time, every day. What if I get sick? Who would take care of him? Who would take care of me? And I'm constantly reminding myself that I'm also a disciple, walking with and caring for God's people. I share this only to admit that I am one of many who are struggling and stressed out. I share this because things are hard right now for everyone, and God is with us right now, even in our hardest, ugliest moments. But what if that transformation or metamorphosis is not pretty? The thing about the butterfly story that we learn as children is that we don't learn about what the caterpillar goes through in that cocoon. We don't learn that the caterpillar turns into goo inside the cocoon. The caterpillar completely breaks down and turns into mush, the technical term, while in the cocoon. We always learn that a beautiful butterfly emerges most days, 
I feel like I'm going to come out a lopsided poisonous moth. I'm not saying this to whine or elicit sympathy. There are millions of families experiencing stress and anxiety in the same ways that I am. We are all under similar and different pressures. This has been a hard year, and we have no idea what our world will look like when we emerge on the other side of this pandemic. Just the other day, I put up a Facebook post that essentially said I was not doing well. I was having chronic pain that no medicine, heat, acupressure, or other tricks I tried would cut it. I was basically bedridden and crying in bed all day. I was feeling extremely depressed, and I mentioned that I was of no harm to myself, but I was in a bad way mentally. I needed support. I needed to feel a sense of community, a sense that I was not alone. I was touched at the outpouring of care I received. Some people sent private notes, some sent public notes, but so many people reached out with caring words. I was touched. I felt like God was reaching out through all these people and saying, I'm still here. See all these people? We are still here. As we begin Lent on Wednesday with its time for repentance and reflection, some people will sacrifice something for Lent. Giving this up for Lent is commonly heard this time of year. My challenge to you would be to consider transfiguration this year. How will you let God work through you? How do you want people to reach out and show care for you? How do you wish to reach out and show care for your church family and community? How can you take care of yourself right now? How do you wish to be transfigured? During this cocoon time, this metamorphosis, how have you already cared for yourself and for others? Amen. This next song is a spiritual that we're going to sing, a traditional spiritual, but we're going to um, put a little country with it and dance and sing hallelujah. So we invite you to sing along with us.
On this last Sunday after Epiphany, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Responding after the words, we pray to the Lord with the phrase, hear our prayer. O God of light, we pray for communities of faith around the globe, for our own congregation, for our church leadership, and for all Christians who cannot gather for communal worship due to oppression or lack of access. Show us your face in the darkness and speak your word of power to all the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. O morning star, we pray for the earth, for life forming in the dark earth and ocean depths, for creatures seen and unseen, and especially for the animals who require cold and ice. Give us your spirit's guidance in our stewardship of the planet. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. O son of righteousness, we pray for our nation's elected leaders, for attorneys and juries, and for all who work for justice in our communities and around the world. We pray for CPS students, teachers, parents, and administrators. We pray for the people of our nation, that prejudice cease, and that violence be averted as hearts are transformed by your love. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Beautiful Savior, we pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers, and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine, for those experiencing homelessness. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care, and for those we commend to you in our hearts. Heal them with your loving might. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Love divine, we pray for those who, especially on this Valentine's Day, feel lonely, who are abandoned, for those who long for your love or for the love of another, who must live apart from their dear ones and for those who grieve. We pray for children separated from their parents at our nation's border and for the homeless seeking shelter in the bitter cold. Embrace with your tender care all your beloveds. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Shine, Jesus, shine also on us and receive the petitions of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. O Holy Trinity, receive our praise and hear our prayers for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, we're the Shank family. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It's so good to see you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Today we give you thanks for your offering, for the many ways that you give and serve God, give to and serve God and one another. We are so very grateful. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for communion. You ready? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now, gathered into one by God's Spirit, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Hold your hands. Can you fold your hands? 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of God is ready. It's a table where all are welcome, no matter our stories, our joys, our struggles, or our griefs, for this is God's table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please come. You say please come? Please come. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and give you courage as you leave this worship today. Now receive this final blessing. May God bless you and keep you, and may God bless you and give you away to others. May God's face shine on you, and may your face reflect an irresistible good news. May God lift up everything that has fallen in you and give you more pieces of peace than you alone can hold. Amen. Good morning, LMC. Hope you're keeping warm on this very cold Sunday, but it's only three weeks till spring training games start. So I'm here with my friend Anthony. We have a few announcements for you this morning. This Wednesday, Lent starts with Ash Wednesday. Our service will be virtual at seven o'clock p.m. During the day between 12 and 12.30 or four and five, you can pick up an individual container of ashes at LMC for use during worship. Or if you would prefer, Pastor Lindsay would be happy to say a blessing over you while you impose your own ashes. Because of the pandemic, Pastor Lindsay won't be imposing the ashes herself. We will also have devotional booklets specific to the Sanctified Art series that we start on Wednesday available for pickup then as well. Additionally, if you would prefer an electronic copy of the Sanctified Art devotionals, shoot me an email in the office and I would be happy to send you that link. We're also happy to announce that on Wednesday evenings between 6.30 and 7.30 during Lent, the sanctuary will be open for individual prayer and contemplation. Uh, we ask that you keep your, we're gonna limit capacity to 10 people or fewer at a time. So we ask that you keep your visit to 15 minutes or less. Um, but if spending some time in the sanctuary is something that feels good to you, we certainly invite you to do that this Lent. That's all we have today. Please stay warm. Yeah, hi. Hi everyone, I'm Deaconess Claire and this little bug and I are here to help us do an important job. Today is the last Sunday before we begin the season of Lent. And during Lent, we have this practice of putting aside a word. We put aside the word Alleluia yeah. until we get to Easter. Um, and, and I've been thinking about this. It's sort of like Alleluia, metamorphosizes over the time that we put it away during Lent into a big giant butterfly of an Alleluia because we wait so long to say it. But we have to put it away. So I'm wondering where I should put my Alleluia away. Maybe you and Lucy can help me figure that out. Okay, so I, I have a few options. Maybe put it in this sparkly jar that has lights in it. What do you think? That would be pretty. And then we could see it if we ever needed to see it, just to be reminded that Alleluia is there, even in the very cold parts of February. 
cold parts of March. Oh, but it's very easy to get into. And usually we put the Alleluia away into our baptismal font as a reminder that uh, Lent is a time to get ready for baptism. And that's not quite as easy to get into. It's a big, heavy stone cover, sort of like a tombstone. What about this? This is kind of a treasure trust. This is, this is my uh, a music box that I got from my grandma when I was little. And inside of it are very precious things. And Alleluia is very precious. I usually put it in there. And we go in with that necklace. Oh, yep, those things. Oh, coins. Maybe not. They do want Lucy to be able to find Alleluia. And she probably shouldn't chew on pins or necklaces or coins maybe. I don't know. I could take the other stuff out. What about my sugar bowl? It's got a lid. Or it sort of looks like a font. I could take the spoon out. And just use this. Maybe. Where would you hide it? Or I have this little teeny tiny itsy weetsy Easter egg. Super teeny tiny. I could put it in there. Do you think Alleluia would fit in something so small? Sometimes I wonder how a butterfly fits inside a chrysalis with all those wings just waiting to come out. Oh, we don't want to eat that. No, thank you. Mm. So I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm going to hide mine. But I encourage you to find, uh, take a piece of paper and write down the word Alleluia and color it bold and bright and beautiful. Find a good place to store it. Maybe some place you can see so you have a reminder of it when you need it. Maybe some place precious other precious things maybe someplace with a lid or maybe in some place teeny teeny tiny that you stuff away and you only pull out at Easter like an Easter egg or maybe in something special that you already have done I don't know I'm not going to tell you which one I choose. You're gonna to have to wait until Easter to find out. But regardless, we have to say Alleluia one more time. Now, if you don't know what Alleluia means and you've been wondering this entire time, it's basically a big word of saying, yay, the most exciting yay you can possibly have. I might have to make another one. something bigger than we even ever have words for. So we are going to have to say it just one more time. Are you ready? One, two, three. Alleluia! 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 One more time, okay. Alleluia! Hi, I'm Jensi Cromie, and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Soren, can you say Alleluia? Yeah. Okay.